you this hour, this live look over Butte, where a decision by Montana's executive branch to hire an out-of-state for-profit contractor is having wide-ranging effects. NBC Montana's Josh Margulis reports on how the change is impacting low-income families in southwest Montana. Our mission is to work with individuals within a six-county region who are low-income and to assist and help them become stable, able to work, and financially secure. For nearly four decades, Career Futures here in Butte has been providing vital resources to low-income families, including housing assistance and job training. But now, due to a change made by the state, they're forced to close. Instead of seeking an in-state provider for these services, which use temporary assistance for needy families, or TANF, and SNAP funds, Montana's Department of Public Health and Human Services has chosen to outsource the work of 12 in-state organizations by entering into a contract with Maximus as the statewide provider. Demoni says the nonprofits looked into pooling their resources into one subcontracting bid, but that was not feasible as they did not meet the new requirements in the RFP. Serving the entire state with a virtual presence uh, through s software and so forth. And that's a very large, large ask, and we could not do it. One of many concerns expressed by Career Futures about Maximus is the lack of emphasis on face-to-face -face relationships with clients. They plan to have just one caseworker for every 35 clients. Compare that to Career Futures, which has 10 to 12 clients per case manager. We can see if they're in distress, we can see if they came in because they are sharing good news. We sometimes are their only support system they feel they have. And in addition, Maximus won't have a full-time in-person office in the Butte area. Instead, they'll meet with clients virtually, with the exception of a kiosk in Butte that will be open one or two times a week. That scares me. We know that that is unrealistic for us. A client comes in and they can easily spend two hours with us trying to figure out what's happening with them at that moment. While the transition doesn't begin until April, Career Futures has already begun clearing out their office and donating inventory to local nonprofits. The computers you see behind me, they'll be split between Silverbow Developmental Disabilities and the Butte Rescue Mission. According to a transition plan provided to Career Futures by DPHHS on Wednesday, New clients will no longer be accepted into Career Futures beginning April 22nd, with the process of transferring current clients running from April 29th through May 10th. Career Futures will then have to fill out their closeout reports before officially dissolving on June 30th. Just trying to get a warm handoff for our clients and wrap up, it's, um, I think it's starting to hit a little bit harder now. Oh, I know we're transferring them and and I just don't want them to transfer into outer space so to speak. This is not a problem unique to the Butte area. CTI and Helena has also announced their impending closure and for career futures the biggest worry isn't what the employees are going to do next. Some have already found other jobs but what the future holds for their current clients of which there are around 50 as they have had minimal contact with Maximus. It really is just devastating, and we don't know what's going to happen with our clients. Reporting in Butte, Josh Margolis, NBC, Montana. We reached out to DPHHS for comment. Director Charlie Brereton tells us they're excited for this partnership to help put more Montanans back to work, and their ultimate goal is to help clients find secure and sustainable employment while increasing their independence.